we've been at it now for a little bit. If you guys have tractors, you know why I have to cut that stump pretty low and why this particular saw in its particular configuration uh, does a pretty good job, right? I can get even closer if I wanted to. My uh, 572 HTSS could not do that cut right there. Something's in the way. So take a look at this thing right here. This is a John Thread 2163 with a small amount. And uh, I ran this in one video before where basically it ran for like a half hour, 45 minutes. Never ran out of gas. I'm going to say closer to 45 minutes. And I cut a lot of firewood and surprised myself and Bob. So I figured today is a perfect day to bring this up right back out. Give it some time. And... Uh, for the next couple of weeks, maybe months, this type of operation is actually going to be pretty typical as I go through the woods with a big tractor and trailer and uh, start cleaning up tops, you know. Today is going to be one of those typical uh, firewood days, and if you're a farmer, you're going to kind of get it, where you don't have a big skitter, you don't have all the fancy stuff, you got a couple of chainsaws you've probably had around for quite some time. And uh, the definition of wind is getting enough firewood in to heat your house for a year. It might be seven, ten cords, you know. And uh, to do it efficiently, well, reasonably efficiently, because I happen to like working in the woods, but also cost effectively. So what we have here is pretty much all the saws that you would be uh, asked to avoid if you were to talk to online experts. So we're kind of at the bottom of the barrel here. I guess you could go one step lower. You could go with a pulling or a But uh, in terms of saw specifications, you know, small mount. Um, this is a 2163, but it has a Forrester bar and chain. And I hit it with a grinder because I've already used it once. So it's not in, in tip-top condition. It's grinder sharpened. And that's a 575 Husqvarna, and uh, probably the least favored of the 70cc saw class Huskies that have been built in the last 40 years. And um, I think part of what this next few weeks, maybe into the winter time, is going to show that they're not all that bad. You know, they can be had for pretty reasonable, pretty cheap. And uh, my goal for that project saw was to build something for the same kind of money I would have spent on a project saw like a kit saw but use oem parts versus aftermarket parts so other than filters and uh, chains and stuff like that the, the guts of that saw are all oem now part of the thing i want to point out is when you talk about uh aftermarket versus uh, oem saws there's always this thing about how the aftermarket is not going to be as reliable as the oem and if you know the history of these, or you watch my videos on the 372X Torx and a few other saws, I'm more Husky focused than I am steel in the other brands. Those first uh, offerings, when they first came out, they were none too reliable. For that matter, I would argue with the bottom end problems that were displayed by the early X Torx and these, when they first came out, put that saw uh, out of service just, just as fast as any of the aftermarket saws. Now, here's a subtle difference, is the rest of the parts around that saw are, are obviously in better uh, quality materials and stuff like that. So once I resolve whatever the issue was mechanically, now the saw is going to be something that's going to be easier to work with, um, just a more satisfying saw to operate just because of the quality of the controls and like that the bar you know so that, that's not something anyone wants to hear but i've kind of like lived this here i've lived the aftermarkets and i've lived these and i have a lot of fun with some of the aftermarket saws i think if you go back in my series and look at my experience with the g395 that's that was a, a fairly solid saw 
and uh, I changed the piston because it had some teething issues like an OEM saw would and uh, they changed the supplier and the specifications and the piston problem I had is not there anymore and I cut a lot of trees with that saw and it's ready to go right now. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because uh, Bob, you all know Bob, he used to tell me all the time, well that saw puts wood in the truck, it's good enough, it puts wood in the truck. And the point he was trying to make for a long time, and it, it took many years to get through my thick head because I'm an enthusiast and I like having things just right, it kind of served up a concept to me that fits. And that is that even though these aren't the most popular saw, they can still put wood on the truck. And they can do it in a cost-effective way because the cost is not just the initial price of the saw, but it's, it's the bits and pieces you may have to change over time. But anyway, back to Bob's point about how oh, a given saw will put wood on the truck even if it's not an optimum saw. Um, Multi-saws are not optimal saws. You can do a lot better with it, either one of these. I don't know if you're gonna have any more fun than the 575 is for me, but you know I'm kind of twisted that way. I like doing stuff like that. This one here, I don't know. Maybe if I put a different top end on it, and, well, there you go. You start putting money into it. Point being, his idea, that particular saw, not all uh, hobby spec, can still make firewood. But what I want to do is. These are actually saws I just figured, well that one I'm running because I'm trying to prove a point, they're not that bad. But this one here, I haven't run it in a while, and it dawned on me, I got a lot of this stuff to do. And uh, the reason I picked this saw is because it's so fuel efficient, which is interesting. And it needs to get run, otherwise it just sits and collects dust. I'm not a person who likes to collect saws for the sake of collecting saws. So, but I wanted to run this one make it a point that even though it's not the most popular, it doesn't have the most popular configuration or specs, it still works. And even with the least desirable bar and chain combos, I still make chips. And I can still put wood, well, not on the truck, on that trailer. That's my truck. Now, what I need to do is I need to clear out a lot of this stuff. So I want a small light saw. I don't want a big bar. I don't want a horse saw, big saw. This saw gets the call, and if I get tired of this saw, I have my uh, 555 in the tractor ready to roll because it goes even faster it has a good bar and chain and I built it so therefore it's fun to run let me fire up and get cut I got a... so it tossed its chain I want you to look at the diameter of that sprocket guess what it's an 8 pin because somebody was trying to increase the chain speed right and look at the tail, that narrow tail bar, and how far that chain has to go before it actually enters into the groove. Now, if I put a seven pin on that, it would be a little bit better, but that's one of the things you deal with, with the uh, narrow tail bars with a three eighths chain sprocket, is um, you want the chain to enter into the groove back in here, not up there. So it'll be a continual issue until I put a seven pin on it. And if I do that, well then I'll have to file it to be aggressive so it'll still cut fast enough to keep me interested. But knowing what it is, what I'll do is I'll keep out of the sticks because that's what usually tosses it. In this case, it had a piece of twig get back in there and just throw the chain right off because you have all that additional space for that thing to get in there and leverage it off the bar, right? I didn't really cover this well in my last video on the 572, but I had two go through the shop that had short bars. One was an 18, one was a 20, and they had skip chains, and they had eight pin sprockets, and they were snap tight. When you get to the point where you can't do anything but have it snap right back to the bar, snap tight, sometimes that puts a little more stress on the PTO side bearing, especially in those really high RPM saws. So, just a little detail, and on this saw right here, I have it a little tighter than I like, simply because I don't want it to toss. And if I create a bearing problem, guess what? Whose fault is that? Saw's fault or mine? What I really need to do is sharpen the chain right. You know, seven pin versus an eight. 
so sacrifice a little bit so I don't have a chain coming off in the middle of the job. But we don't do that, do we? As a group, we don't we don't think that way. We think, oh my God, I want the chain speed. Well, I need to start producing some firewood here because I've done a lot of cleanup, but I don't see a lot of wood uh, getting into that trailer. And I'm going to do a little bit of work with a small saw, and then I think I'm going to start using the bigger saw for the longer bar because it makes sense in the next part of this operation. Does anybody know why I left that leg of the log on? Think about it. Um, I can work in and around that log. It's not going to roll back on me. With that chain coming off like that, that's beginning to annoy me. And I don't know if you've listened to my channel enough to know that when I find myself having to work around a characteristic of a saw, that's when I put it down, right? So I have to develop a bar chain combination that both gives me the cut speed I want, but also uh, doesn't stop me in the middle of my work, because that's the definition of lose if I have a saw that does that. <laughs> Here, I'm going to get a little closer to some of the cuts and I'm going to swap some saws around.
just for kicks, let's fire off the 575 and see what it does in the same situation. And then the 560, see if I can get that going. point I probably would move to this saw uh, you know the small lemon stuff has been done but wait there's more let me go get the 562 well it's a 555 and uh, we'll see what that one does all right this saw uh, is not what it seems to be not a 562 it's actually a 560 by spec but i started out with a 555 and uh put all the good stuff from a 562 on top of it stuff or crank uh the cylinder with the larger transfer caps carburetor ignition all that stuff so basically it's 562 wrapped around a 555 now i had to get a special crank right and that's because the small mount set of cases has a whole different arrangement for oil pump and all that. So I couldn't just put a 562 crank in a 555. It wouldn't work. I had to actually order either a 2260 or a uh, 560 Husqvarna crank in order to make it what I wanted. Get a whole video on it. You can go back and look. But it's been sitting in my tractor since the winter time. I don't know if it started <laughs> probably water in the gas by now. So that's the one thing. The second thing is instead of having a full chisel uh, chain, this is actually a round, a round tooth versus a chisel. And so it shouldn't cut that fast at all, right? That's what everybody's going to tell you. And the reason I use this chain is, like I said, this one bounces around my tractor. And typically does fence line, trail, muddy fall downs, and stuff like that. So I was looking to try to have a longer lasting chain. I believe that's a steel brand. It's either that or it's a cheap Husqvarna. sometimes forget you know but that thing's a lot of fun to run that's a my ultimate old man saw with a round tooth chain on it so you put a full chisel on that saw it'll stick with a 575 even in this big wood trust me it's a fast saw so i think i'm going to finish the day out with this
it weighs less than both those two saws. This thing is a blast. I forgot. So those other two get put back on the trailer. I'm going to load this thing up with gas and oil and continue.
guess the moral of the story is sometimes you just got to go with uh, the one that works the best. And this, today, it's this one. You know, as much as this is a hobby, and this is nowhere near stock, it's a lot of fun to run. And uh, so, yeah, the John Thread will put wood on the truck or the trailer, but it won't put a smile on my face the way this one does. And this one does it faster, too. Of course, this is the ultimate old man saw, which is really hilltop saw shop uh, style build. And if you go back into the archives, uh, this is one where I uh, decked the cylinder and uh, cut a pop-up piston, did a little bit of port work. And if you hadn't noticed, it shows. Because that chain right there has got time on it. It's a uh, round tooth versus a chisel. And it still cuts pretty fast. So, I think I'm going to call it a day. Do some splitting with the axe and fill up the rest of that trailer. And I got enough down right now. I got to clean it up. But, uh, yeah, I want to do a felon video. I get so tired of some of these arguments that people make about one versus another. Rather than argue about it, I think what I'll do is, is when I have a chance, like I have a whole bunch of this beach, which I want to clear cut anyway, is um, we'll do some of the, uh, the expert approved style of cut and you just watch what it does versus some of the stuff that we do out here, open face type cuts, for example, and how that affects the pole and uh, direction. All right.